Hyundai's N division is establishing quite a track record with its shopping rockets. Here's the smallest of them, the rather endearingly frantic i20N. If you like your small hatches serious and spicy, Hyundai's wild i20N will be right up your street. Compared with the Madras served up by its Fiesta ST arch rival, it's a bit more vindaloo. But if you think that's what a shopping rocket Super Mini should really be about, you'll like this one very much indeed. Performance branding can sometimes be a disappointment. Names like Cupra and DS spring to mind. But Hyundai's N series of uber fast hatches has proved to be anything but. Masterminded by former BMW M series boss Albert Bierman, credibility for the career maker's hot hatches has been achieved remarkably quickly. Things kicked off in 2017 with a car we really liked, the i30N, which got closer to unsettling the Golf GTI than we ever thought it would. That model's now been followed up with two more, the Kona N small performance crossover, and the subject of this review, the i20N, a ballistic super mini on steroids aimed directly at the small fast hatch champion, Ford's Fiesta ST. The Hyundai N recipe is a familiar one by now. Take the standard hatch, stiffen it up a bit, insert a bigger, gutsier engine, then remove the wheels, brakes and suspension and replace with circuit-tuned parts. Finally, season with a bit of madcap visual drama, which clues you in for what we're in for with this i20N. Sit back and enjoy the industry's most comprehensive video review, the car and driving road test. It's difficult to know quite what to expect after all the pavement theatre outside. Once you get behind the wheel and get ready for whatever Hyundai's N division has served up this time. Every high performance N model is designed in Namyang, South Korea, then rigorously tested at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, generally recognised as the world's most challenging racetrack. Stab the starter button and the deep, thrumbly exhaust note sounds promising, especially when a prod of the blue steering wheel end button deepens it to a more potent rumble. To the accompaniment of a switch with a fiery ring to a single rev counter on the instrument screen in front of you. You're ready, but for what? Madras or Vindaloo? On paper, most of the right figures are delivered here for fully paid up membership of the frantically fast section of the hot hatch super mini sector. There's a 1.6 litre four cylinder turbo engine developing 204 PS. That's pretty much what you'll get from a rival Ford Fiesta ST. The i20N's performance figures near replicate those of that Ford too. Rests to 62 mile an hour in 6.7 seconds. The ST is 6.5 seconds on the way to 143 miles an hour. The 275 newton meter torque figure is the only one you might question, given that the rival Ford now manages 320 newton meters of pulling power. But stats alone don't really deliver the full story here. For that, you'll need to have properly programmed in what lies behind these blue steering wheel N buttons. They're your access point to the fieriest N mode and beyond that for the most bespoke N custom settings for the cheesily named N Grin control system, which also includes Hyundai's usual eco, normal and sport modes. The parameters for the two N custom settings, one behind each blue paddle, can be programmed on the centre screen like you would in a BMW M car, selecting your favoured presets for engine response, steering weight, ESC intervention and the rev matching function. Plus, you can alter the bassy note of the big bore exhaust. Brilliant. Most owners will set up one of the custom menus for commuting with the other for hard driving. Track day fiends, though, will prefer to keep one of those menus apart for circuit work, perhaps to use in conjunction with the prominent selectable lap timer and G-force meter displays. And the very motorsport-focused home screen for the N-mode option you can select from this monitor on the centre stack. 
Here, there's everything a serious driver might need to know displayed at a glance. A digital speedo and rev counter bar in the centre, throttle readout and temperatures for engine and oil to the left, and to the right, a brake pressure readout and even circuit maps, all of the preset ones appropriately being for the Nürburgring. You can customise the screen display widgets according to preference. Get all this right and you'll get yourself a really engaging tarmac tool. The steering sharp, the six-speed manual gear shift is sweet, grip from the bespoke Pirelli P0 rubber is prodigious and there's enough traction to make the most of the 1.6 litre motor, though it's easy to spin the wheels away from rest if you're not careful with your right foot. Pedal feel from the N Performance braking system is great thanks to front discs increased by 40 millimetres in size over an ordinary i20. Rev matching can be activated separately via this big red button on the steering wheel for sportier downshifts. And body rolls kept well in check by the stiff chassis reinforced at 12 different points to suit this N model's higher performance remit. Is it all enough overall to make this car a more engaging steer than a rival Fiesta ST? Well, you might think so. The fact that this Hyundai is a fraction lighter seems to help its point-to-point -point agility, and it certainly sounds more potent, with all manner of pops and crackles on the overrun when you brake for a bend, ready to activate the end corner carving differential. Another slightly silly name, disguising borrowed technology, in this case a mechanical limited slip differential, to get the power down through the turns. It's worth mentioning that Ford expects you to pay extra for a limited slip diff with a Fiesta ST as part of an expensive optional performance pack that also gives you shift lights and launch control. Hyundai though throws all these things in as standard here and the features are arguably better developed too. You can, for instance, choose a target RPM point for shift light and launch control activation and do so via the same performance options menu that also activates the N Road Sense feature, which gives you a screen recommendation to switch to N mode when the speed sign camera detects a double bend sign being passed. It's the kind of little detail feature that you might really like, or well, we did anyway. Prior to this test though, we'd worried that all this track style focus would hurt this Hyundai in the real world suburban conditions where it'll spend the majority of its life. After all, the thing that's so great about this model's Ford Fiesta rival is the way that it's as comfortable at Sainsbury's as at Silverstone. It's asking a lot for the i20N to match that with its unique track-tamed N-programmed spring and damper setup, bespoke kinematics and stiffer beam at the rear axle. None of it really much of a recipe for Fiesta-style suppleness in town. But this Hyundai gets closer to that class benchmark than we expected it would. Yes, the low-speed ride is pretty firm. You certainly clonk with a jolt over speed humps and potholes. And because adaptive damping is pretty much unheard of in this class of car, there's nothing you can do about it. But when you're pottering around over the usual urban tarmac tears, it's actually fine. Yes, fine enough for you to get away with justifying this car to your other half, which is probably the parameter Hyundai was aiming at. If you need anything more than that in terms of commuting compromise, then tepid N-line versions of the ordinary i20 await you on the other side of your dealer's showroom. But a driver of one of those wouldn't see which way this car went at full chat on your favourite back double home from the office or the school run. Here's a car that, in its own way, has been as carefully engineered for an enthusiast as any Aston or Porsche, just for a lower price point. And sometimes you might even find yourself having even more fun than you would in a supercar. So there you have it, almost right, first time, just like the i30N. The Hyundai N division success story continues. Perhaps wanting to do something a bit different to the understated look championed by rivals, Hyundai has given this i20N a fully-fledged, max-power style World Championship Rally demeanour. 
as you could say, it's entitled to do, given its World Rally Champion manufacturer status. You certainly won't lose this car in the long-stay car park. The rally references are obvious with the use of this proper roof-mounted wing rather than the usual subtle spoiler. And there's a serious-looking serrated lower diffuser too, housing this big, fat oval exhaust, though it's surrounded by a rather unnecessarily large amount of tomato red flashing. In profile, the standard i20's wedge-shaped silhouette, emphasised by this rather unique swept-up design around the C and D pillars, works well with this shopping rocket embellishment. The red lower side sill stripe, the black mirrors, and in this case, the optional black contrast coloured roof. There are lovely details too, like the silver i20 badge just above the rear wheel arch, and branded red calipers for the end performance braking system, peeping out between the spokes of the 18-inch matte grey light alloy wheels. Of course, you'll want overtaking presence too, delivered here at the front by a bespoke red-trimmed lip spoiler and a black branded grille with a unique chequered flag-inspired pattern, through which you can just about glimpse the huge intercooler necessary to calm the throbbing turbo. Angular black corner cutouts house the beady fog lamps just below menacing LED headlights with tick-shaped upper daytime running light strips. And of course, as usual, what's more important is what you can't see, a five-door body shell that's reinforced in no fewer than 12 places compared to a standard i20. After all that, it would be disappointing to get inside and find a merely mildly warmed over interior. Don't worry though, that's not what's been served up here. Instead, this cabin's full of serious statements of intent, like this firmly contoured blue stitch steering wheel with its blue N-mode paddles and prominent red rev matching button and the end sports seats with blue branding that grip you properly around the nether regions. All the shopping rocket detailing you'd want is present and correct too. A perfectly positioned gear lever with serrated black and silver finishing, end branded door sill tread plates, race style silver pedals and blue stitching to decorate the upholstery, the handbrake, the door cards and the gear shift gaiter. Shopping rocket fans will love it all but not perhaps quite as much as what they'll find on the two 10.25 inch screens that dominate the dash. So let's start with the digital supervision cluster you view through that leather stitched three spoke wheel, a prod on either of the blue buttons of which transforms the twin dial display into a single rev counter gauge to the rather chintzy accompaniment of a fiery ring. Oil and engine temperature sit on the left of the monitor, while on the right, you can select what you see, a G-force meter, tire pressures, turbo bar and torque readouts, or a lap timer. For more measured motoring, another prod on either blue N paddle returns you to the twin dial screen, which can be switched between Hyundai's more usual drive modes, white shaded normal, turquoise shaded eco and red themed sport. The twin dial layout sees the info section in the center tailored by a button on the right hand wheel spoke that scrolls you through the usual sections for car data, navigation and drive assist features. Plus an extra checkered flag section's been added should you want the twin dial display to be able to centrally show the g-force meter, tyre pressure, turbo bar and torque readouts and lap timer features mentioned earlier. In the mood yet? If not, hopefully you will be by the time you investigate the contents of this complementing center console display, which to start with seems innocuous, initially illuminating with one simple uncluttered screen showing temperature, audio and navigation. But don't worry, there's more. Swipe across to this display full of icons and you'll quickly want to investigate this end mode section, which really will deliver the required racetrack vibe. Quite literally on the right of the screen where various circuits are displayed. All of the preloaded ones, appropriately given this car's primary development location, being various Nürburgring track layouts. 
This is the screen that you'd have open when driving the car hard, so there's everything a serious driver might need to know displayed at a glance. A digital speedo and rev counter bar in the centre above a lap timer with brake pressure readout to the right and a throttle readout and temperatures for engine and oil to the left. Swipe to the left and the further screen that's revealed allows you to input the custom settings you'll need for the two blue steering wheel N paddles. Maybe one set for commuting, the other for hard driving. You'll need to tailor responses for engine, steering, rev matching, ESC and exhaust sound. And key settings will appear at the bottom of the instrument cluster as you drive. From the custom screens, you can also activate launch control for Grand Prix getaways and select from a further menu of performance options, which is also accessible from the main end mode menu screen. You might wonder at this point what possible further mode options there could really be. Well, quite a few, as it turns out. You can set the rev level for launch control activation between 3 and 5,000 RPM. Select the RPM point where the shift light illuminates with or without an alert sound. And activate an N road sense feature, which when switched on will give you a recommendation to shift into N mode when the forward facing camera registers that you're about to pass a double bend sign. Yes, really. Serious stuff, quite a lot of which we haven't even seen on supercars, let alone a little shopping rocket. But of course, all the sensible things feature too. So this centre screen has the usual navigation, phone and media options, plus Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone projection and a six-speaker DAB audio system that you'll probably want to upgrade to this optional Bose premium sound package setup. There's also a climate section, though fortunately not at the expense of physical buttons, provided further down this centre stack. The screen climate menu adding useful auto dehumidify and auto defog functions. Hyundai is also keen, you should know, that this monitor incorporates their latest Blue Link connected car services. These providing live information and control of the car via an app. You can access various Blue Link options via this display too. There's a calendar, weather reports, and info on vehicle diagnostics, plus incorporated Hyundai Live services alert you to speed cameras and provide accurate information on traffic jams and roadworks. We're not so keen on the voice recognition setup, which can't manage something as basic as finding you a favorite radio station. There are, though, some really nice extra screen touches we do like here. An icon that allows you to record voice memos, for instance. So if you think of something while you're driving that you don't want to forget, you don't have to reach for your phone or stop and write it down. And there's a quiet mode which turns off the rear speakers should you want to use the audio system while facilitating sleep for toddlers strapped in the back. What else? Well, the seats lack lumbar support, even on plusher variants, but they offer a reasonable lower back and side support, and achieving a reasonable level of comfort is fairly easy, thanks to plenty of cushion and wheel adjustment. We prefer a backrest adjustment wheel rather than this lower lever, though. All-round visibility is aided by thin A-pillars that give you a wide view at junctions, while the low belt line and little quarter windows set into the rear C-pillars help your vision at the rear. And just in case, rear sensors and a reversing camera come as standard. This camera has a particularly neat extra option that allows you to view the ground directly as you reverse if you're worried that you might be about to back over something. Build quality, as usual with Hyundai, is excellent and the various fittings seem to have been well screwed together by the Turkish factory which slightly makes up for the fact that a lot of the cabin fittings feel cheap, especially the door handles and the door bins. You don't necessarily expect soft-touch plastics in a Super Mini, though some rivals are starting to offer them, but some small hatches do a better job of disguising hard, brittle surfaces than this. Cabin practicality is reasonable with a big glove box and properly sized cup holders next to the thankfully manual handbrake. A deep storage box is positioned further back between the seats, but it lacks the connectivity ports that would allow you to charge your phone inside away from prying eyes. 
Those ports sit above this deep backlit well at the base of the center stack. You get a 12 volt socket plus a couple of USB-A points above a wireless charging pad. The door bins are a reasonable size and have angled bottle holders, plus you get a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor. Right, time to move to the rear. Now, unlike its arch rival, Ford's Fiesta ST, the i20N can't be had with the alternative of a sportier three-door body style, but the designers have tried to deliver some of that look with this swept-back tapering roof silhouette, something that will slightly impede access for taller folk. The doors open nice and wide, though. And once inside, you'll find that this Hyundai has as much rear space for legs and knees as you could reasonably expect in this class. There's certainly a little more than is offered by the five-door version of that rival Fiesta. Headroom isn't quite so noteworthy thanks to said roof line, but this design's relatively wide exterior width and notably low centre transmission tunnel mean it'd be just about realistic to take a trio of passengers back here if you absolutely had to, though this raised central cushion wouldn't do much for the comfort of the middle occupant. What else? Well, it's a bit mean of Hyundai to only offer a seat back pocket on the front passenger side. There's only one grab handle coat hook too. Still, the door pockets are reasonably large. They'll take a 500 milliliter bottle and useful touches include a provided USB-A port below this central cubby and little side slots to put your belt buckle in when not in use. Let's finish this section with a look at the boot. Now lift the hatch and you're greeted with quite an accommodating luggage area in the segment. 352 litres in size, which is a useful 60 litres larger than you get from that Fiesta ST. In fact, it's only 43 litres smaller than the boot you'd get from a Hyundai i30N in the next hot hatch class up. There'd certainly be no problem in taking something like a baby buggy because the trunk area itself is broad, deep and well shaped. We also like the way that a channel is provided, enabling the parcel shelf to be slid vertically behind the rear seat back when not in use. There's a boot light, a bag hook and four tie down points in what Hyundai calls a luggage board, a dual height folding floor which works better than it does in an ordinary i20 because there's no mild hybrid kit to have to fit in underneath. Though the spare wheel well beneath the floor still doesn't house a spare wheel. One day, a super mini maker will offer the flexibility of either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 seatback split, but that day hasn't yet come. So there's just this conventional 60-40 split backrest that lowers to reveal a 1,165 litre total capacity. Hyundai isn't messing about here. There are no trim options, transmission choices, or body style alternatives. Just this single i20N model offering 204 PS and priced for launch at £25,000. If you really want to spend more, there are three £500 option choices, all fitted here. Special paint, a two-tone phantom black pearl roof, and a Bose premium sound package. That's it. Many customers will be cross-shopping with this car's arch-rival, Ford's Fiesta ST, and at first glance, this Hyundai might look a little pricey against that model. The ST, after all, starts at around £22,500, but look closer. That only gets you the Ford in three-door base-spec ST2, guys. You'll need a Fiesta ST in five-door ST3 form to properly mirror what you'd get with this i20N. At the time of this test in autumn 2021, that variant was actually costing customers £700 more than Hyundai wants to charge here. On top of that, Ford wants nearly £1,000 more for a performance pack that will give you a limited slip differential, launch control and performance shift lights, all of which come as standard with this i20N. There are other rivals you could consider, of course, but none offer quite as close a match as that Ford. A Mini Cooper S in five-door sport trim also costs around 
25,000, but that car has only 180 PS and you'd need to spend quite a lot more on it to match equipment to this Hyundai's level. We think a Volkswagen Polo GTI like this Hyundai offering 204 PS is possibly a closer match. Yet another car priced at around £25,000, but that model's only available with a paddle shift auto gearbox and its more laid back demeanour won't appeal to a typical i20N customer. There's not much else you could look at if you want your hot hatch to be super mini sized. Renault, Vauxhall, Peugeot, Seat and Alfa Romeo have all vacated this segment. And these days the Suzuki Swift Sport has only 129 PS. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it really is an i20N that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Hyundai has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. This Korean contender is certainly well equipped. You get the bespoke full body kit we described to you in our design and build section and 18 inch matte grey light alloy wheels featuring the red calipers of the brand's N performance braking system and shod with bespoke Pirelli tyres. Standard engineering features include the rather cheesily named N Grin control system with its five drive modes. N Rev matching, a double declutching function for smoother gear shifts. The N corner carving differential, a mechanical limited slip differential. A sound generator with variable silencer control. N custom mode settings for the two blue N steering wheel buttons. And a launch control system you can adapt with rev limit settings. Plus, there's the usual Hyundai drive mode select system. More conventional features you can also tick off include full LED headlights, front fog lamps, rear privacy glass, rear LED combination lights, auto headlamps and wipers and a perimeter alarm. Keyless entry, power folding mirrors and rear parking sensors also feature. Plus there's a downloadable Hyundai Blue Link app which using your smartphone you can remotely lock or unlock the car and can be advised if the alarm goes off. Using the app via your phone, you can also access maintenance info on your i20N, send places of interest data to the car's navigation system, and find the vehicle in a crowded car park if you've forgotten where you put it. What about the inside? Well, the cabin gets race-style heated bucket seats, a 10.25-inch instrument cluster display, and a central infotainment screen of the same size, which is where you access the many performance presets of that Hyundai N Grin control system. And of course, the usual navigation, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, Hyundai Blue Link, Bluetooth, and DAB audio features. There's also a leather wrapped N branded sports steering wheel, a black roof liner, aluminium style sports pedals, an N branded leather wrapped gear knob and blue interior mood lighting. Plus, you can also tick off a heated steering wheel, heated front seats, climate control air conditioning, a rear view camera, an auto dimming rear view mirror, a wireless charging pad, cruise control with a speed limiter, a trip computer and an adjustable height rear luggage board. We talked about paint colours earlier. Now, unless you go for elemental brass metallic, not likely, you'll be paying extra, as we said, either for the solid polar white finish or this car's N signature performance blue paintwork. There's also a sleek silver metallic and dragon red, intense blue and phantom black pearl finishes. Let's complete this section with a perusal of the safety stuff on offer. Now, Hyundai claims to have considerably improved its Smart Sense package of camera safety features for this third generation i20, though at the time of this test, this i20N wasn't featuring everything that's on offer, which means, of course, that an autonomous emergency braking system comes as standard, one that can specifically detect pedestrians or cyclists. Plus, as you'd expect, there's lane departure warning system with lane keep assist, plus driver attention alert, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness, and high beam assist, which automatically dips your headlights in the face of oncoming traffic. A rear occupant alert feature that stops you from inadvertently leaving the car when a sleeping child might be resident on the back seat. And intelligent speed limit warning pictures speed signs as you passed, displaying them on the dash. 
Other standard safety features are more familiar. There are twin front side and curtain airbags linked to an e-call emergency button system which will alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location if they go off in a crash. You also get ISOFIX rear child seat fastenings and active front head restraints that prevent whiplash. In addition, as usual with a super mini of this kind, there's ESC or electronic stability control with an interim sport setting, tyre pressure monitoring and hill start assist control to stop the car rolling backwards as you pull away on inclines. As you'd also expect in this segment, the ABS anti-lock brakes are aided in panic stops by a brake assist feature plus an emergency stop signal that flashes the hazard lights to warn following motorists. You don't choose a ballistically fast hot hatch in search of economy, but Hyundai has done what it can here. The 1.6T GDI engine utilises Hyundai's continuously variable valve duration, or CVVD technology, to try and optimise fuel efficiency. The CVVD regulates the duration of valve opening and closing according to driving conditions, achieving a boost in performance and a claimed 3% improvement in fuel efficiency. The best possible fuel efficiency you could conceivably get with this car is theoretically around 40 miles per gallon on the WLTP combined cycle. The official figures are 40.4 mpg and 158 grams per kilometer of CO2. But if you get anywhere near that on a regular basis, then you probably shouldn't have bought this car in the first place and it deserves a better home. You know where we are. You might want to know that a rival Fiesta ST manages 44.1 mpg and 145 grams per kilometer. And as usual with Hyundai, as with all i20s, you get one of the best customer assurance plans in the industry. The five year triple care warranty includes five years of mechanical cover with no mileage limit, annual vehicle health checks and roadside assistance. It's a lot better than the meager three year or 60,000 mile package you get with a rival Ford Fiesta ST. Prepare yourself for the fact that insurance is going to be pricey. This car rated at Group 27A, the same as a Fiesta ST3 five-door. As are your BIK tax payments. This model rated at 35%. Appearances can be deceptive. On paper, in price and power terms, the i20N seems to be aimed directly at Ford's Fiesta ST. Then you set eyes on this Korean shopping rocket and it instantly seems far more max power, far more hardcore than the uber confident little Ford. It can't be a usable commuting tool in the way that Fiesta is, can it? But the i20N is. In fact, it's arguably better. Yet is just as good at delivering when the road starts twisting and you feel like stretching its legs. When you do that, you get a rawer, more aggressive thing, and you'll need to be ready for that. But this is motorsport tuning you could live with. In this day and age, on the roads you drive with the life you live, do you really need more of a performance car than this? Yes, there are elements of this Hyundai that aren't quite as polished as its Ford arch rival. But these are the things that make it what it is. And if you like what it is, you'll like it very much indeed.